Chapter 3 Doubt Poison and Faith Nectar Deepen your faith in yourself. Nothing will be able to frighten or weaken you. Like every good quality, faith is a gift from God. But faith can also be increased by our personal effort. If we pray or meditate, we can increase our faith. Faith is like a muscle. If we take exercise, we develop our muscles. Similarly, if we exercise our faith, this can also be expanded. Many enter into the spiritual life out of curiosity. They have very little faith. Yet something compels them to continue. Later on, they feel within themselves the blossoming of deeper faith. When one follows a spiritual path, one is bound to acquire more faith. One way to develop more faith is by mixing with someone who already has faith. It is like mixing with a person who has more knowledge than you have. It brings to the fore your own knowledge. Similarly, while mixing with one who has more faith, your faith flame will be kindled. If you feel that somebody has more faith in God than you have, then go ahead and mix with that person. Even if you do not get the opportunity to talk to him, his very presence will increase the faith within you. It is advisable for you as a seeker to mix with those who have more capacity and more aspiration than you. Your heart will unconsciously act like a divine magnet to draw from them their divine qualities. Inner Enemies and Friends Doubt is the worst possible thief in our inner life. It takes away all our precious inner wealth. Doubt is a slow poison. Why? Because doubt starts doubting itself. Today you doubt someone and tomorrow you doubt yourself. Today you come to one conclusion and tomorrow another wave of doubt envelops you. That does not mean that today's doubt has been washed away. No. It has only been replaced by another doubt. You have kept doubt as your friend for a very long time. If you did not feel that doubt is your real friend, you would not have stayed with doubt. But the moment you see that a better friend is entering into your life, you will not act like a fool. You will say, now another friend has come into my life, and I see that this friend will take me to a higher goal. Your new friends are faith and courage. These two friends have always been inside you, but you have not sided with them. If you do change friends, what happens? In the beginning, your old friends, fear and doubt, will try to bring you back. They will not want to lose your friendship, but soon they will feel that it is beneath their dignity to mix with you. They will say, all right, let him go, let him go. If he does not care for us, if he does not need us, then we also do not need him. It is like human pride. When we lose a friend, at first we try to bring the friend back. When we see that it is a hopeless case, our ego comes to the fore. We say, if he does not need us, then we also do not need him. In this way, doubt and fear leave us when we make friends with faith and courage. In the inner world, I can have sunshine every day. For my inner faith is founded upon God's infallible promise light. Overcoming Doubt The best and most effective way to conquer doubt is to feel that you're all certainty. Feel that you're all courage. Always try to identify yourself with the positive. Right now, unfortunately, you may be identifying with doubt, feeling that this is reality. But if you change your attitude, then you will say that doubt is not reality. Fear is not reality. The real reality is faith. The real reality is courage. How will you do this? If doubt enters, you have to think of its antidote, which is faith. If doubt enters into your mind, immediately utter the word faith. Just say, I am God's child. So how can I doubt myself? How can I doubt others? 
how can I doubt God? We will never be able to conquer doubt by wishful thinking alone. We have to make a conscious effort. If we identify ourselves with the mind, we will not have the power to conquer doubt, because the mind itself unconsciously or consciously cherishes doubt. The soul has more power than the mind. We should try to save ourselves with the light of the soul. Every day, before doubt has the opportunity to enter into our mind, we should try to feel the light of the soul inside us. Each time doubt comes, we should feel that the soul is not only protecting us, but also giving us a new life, a life of constant and abundant faith, not only in God, but also in ourselves. Doubt will leave us when we feel that we are destined to do something for God. We get tremendous power from the word destined. This word brings boundless courage to the fore. Even if somebody is weak by nature, if someone says that he is destined to work for God, then immediately from the inner world, heroism comes forward. He will fight against any obstruction with a strength and inner determination that will surprise him. Obstructions may come to him in the form of impurity, obscurity, jealousy, fear and doubt, but the word destined will smash the pride of all the negative forces. Anything that is undivine will have to surrender to this word. So if we have the inner and outer conviction that tells us that we are destined to serve God, then the goal can unmistakably be reached. The Doubt Monkey When doubt or some other negative force enters into you, take it as a monkey which is constantly bothering you. You are praying and meditating, and here a monkey is bothering you. You let the monkey go on and on because you are patient. There is a competition between your patience and the monkey's mischievous pranks. Because you are a seeker, you are bound to have more patience than someone who is not aspiring. The monkey is not aspiring, so the monkey's patience can never equal yours. We have an ego. The monkey also has a form of ego. If you are not paying any attention to it, the monkey will eventually feel that it is beneath its dignity to bother you. Patience has the capacity to dissolve wrong forces, and if you have patience, the negative forces can never win. Doubt is an old disease. Faith is an old medicine. Compassion is an old doctor. Concern is an old nurse. Doubting God If you doubt God, God will not lose any of his infinite capacities. You can doubt God's existence if you want to, because he is not standing right in front of you. You do not see him or consciously feel him. But do not doubt yourself. If somebody else has realized God, why should you not be able to do the same? The same God that exists in him also exists in you. All souls have come from the same source, which is God. If one person has realized God through the aspiration of his soul, you can do it too. Your doubt is baseless. Although your aspiration may not yet be as intense as the other person's aspiration was, you have to feel that God can never be fulfilled until you have realized him. God's existence needs fulfillment in and through you. If your friend has realized God, but you still remain unrealized, then rest assured that God remains unfulfilled. He will be fulfilled only on the day when all human beings have realized Him. You may have absolute faith in God's existence, but you may doubt God's compassion. You may say, is God really so compassionate? I have done so many things wrong in my life. Will he still give me his knowledge light? Why should he show me his unconditional compassion? To conquer this kind of doubt, remember that once upon a time you were a soul in the soul's world. 
Who brought your soul into this world? It was God. Before you were consciously aware of spirituality, divinity, and reality, God gave you life. God gave you the message of divinity. Already you can see how much God has given you, although you never consciously asked for these things. It has all come to you through your soul. Who created your soul? God. Who offered it to you? God. Who is going to fulfill you through your soul? Again, it is God. So you can easily stop doubting God's concern. God's business is to fulfill Himself and manifest Himself on earth. If you consciously aspire, then it becomes easier for Him to fulfill and manifest Himself through you. If you offer Him your sincerity, your aspiration, and take one step toward Him, He will take 99 steps toward you. You give what you can, and God will give you not only what He has, but also what He is. What he has is infinite concern, and what he is is infinite light. My Lord Supreme, what will you do for me if I give you my heart's blossoming faith? My child, I shall take away your mind's brooding doubts. Faith works miracles. Absence of doubt is one thing. But faith, real faith, is something else. The study of books and scriptures can give us information and a certain understanding. It can give us, at most, inspiration, but nothing more. By borrowing others' ideas, we can never be truly enlightened in our inner life. It is by studying the eternal book of truth within us, by listening constantly to the voice of the inner self, that we can become spiritually enlightened. It is then that we will find joy in our outer life. We must see God first, and then we can become godlike. If we want to be truly godlike, our talking must give way to becoming. Let me tell you a true story. Throughout India, people pray to Lord Krishna a great spiritual master who lived on earth thousands of years ago. In a certain village in Bengal, India, a rich man's servant went to his master's house every day by crossing a river in a ferry boat. One day there was a violent storm. The ferry could not cross the raging river and the servant, who was forced to go many miles out of his way to a footbridge, was late in arriving. His master was furious. You fool, he shouted. If you utter Lord Krishna's name three times, you will see that you do not need a boat. You will be able to walk across the river. That afternoon, as the storm showed no signs of abating, the poor servant was threatened with the same situation. This time, in his simple faith, he obeyed his master's instructions. From the very depths of his heart, he uttered the name of Lord Krishna. Lo, the miracle of miracles! He felt a power propelling him toward the water, and he was able to walk upon the very waves. Thus he crossed the river. When the master heard the story, his joy knew no bounds. A swelling pride rose in his heart. Was it not his advice that had brought about the success? I never knew that my advice had such great power, he thought. Let me enjoy this miracle myself. The rich man went to the river, which was now calm and serene, and uttered Lord Krishna's name three times. He began to cross, but fear and doubt tortured his whole being, and although he shouted the sacred name hundreds of times, his attempt was fruitless. He drowned. What do we learn from this story? The servant had sincere faith in his master. He also had implicit faith in Lord Krishna. It was this absolute faith in a divine power that saved him and proved the power of Lord Krishna's grace. 
planting faith seeds. If something is true, you will feel it within the very depths of your heart, although sometimes it may take a little time. After a seed is sown, it takes a few months for it to germinate. In a year it grows into a sapling, and eventually it grows into a huge banyan tree. When you begin to take an interest in the spiritual life, you have sown the seed. You may not see the results immediately. You will feel light and peace. But first you have to have faith. Inside your body there are many organs, the heart, lungs and so on. You believe this because doctors and others say so. Although you cannot see these organs, you know that they are there. Similarly, in the inner world, if you do not see something right now, you cannot say that it does not exist. In your inner life, there are many things which you may not be aware of right now, but if you pray and meditate soulfully and cultivate more faith in what you have heard from spiritual seekers and masters, then eventually you will see that they are absolutely correct. You have to start with faith, sincere, genuine, sublime faith. This faith is not going to mislead you. When you read a spiritual book, that book embodies light. While reading, you may not feel light inside the book right away, but still you do not discard the book. You have some faith in the messages that the book contains. You meditate on the words and ideas that the book embodies, and eventually you do get light. Inside the book, there is a hidden reality. If you believe in that hidden reality while you are reading, in the course of time you will get illumination. But you have to read the book in order to get the essence, the quintessence of the book. Similarly, you have to pray and meditate before you will feel your own divinity. If you cannot feel your inner divinity right now, do not be sad or upset. Pray and meditate sincerely, and through your faith, your real divinity will one day loom large. If you do not have higher experiences or realizations, as soon as you enter the spiritual life, do not give up. Right now, if you do not feel inside the very depths of your heart something divine, illumining, fulfilling and perfect, no harm. It takes time to acquire a free access to the inner world. But once you have free access to the inner world, you will see that it is flooded with light and delight. You are crying because the quantity of your mind's doubts is as vast as the ocean. Why do you not smile and dance, since you know that the quality of your heart's faith is as pure as a morning rose? The Faith of a Child you are God's child, not God's slave. If you can approach God as your father, then you can say, My father is rich, my father is great, my father is kind. He is bound to give me a portion of his kindness, his greatness, and his wealth. This is the spontaneous feeling a child will have. If you feel that God is the Lord and you are his slave, then how are you going to have faith in yourself? A slave will immediately say, Today he is my master, tomorrow he may kick me out. A slave cannot claim his master's wealth or capacity as his very own, but a child can. If you want to have faith in yourself, First, you have to feel what kind of connection or relationship you have established with your inner pilot. If it is the relationship of father and child, or mother and child, or lover and beloved, if it is the relationship of two most intimate, absolutely closest friends, then you can expect everything from God. But if you cannot establish that kind of sweet oneness between yourself and God, then how will you maintain any faith? If you think, He is very aloof, He is the Lord Supreme, and I am just a meaningless creature, then there can be no feeling of oneness. If you think of yourself as a tiny ant and God as a huge elephant, naturally you will say, 
Oh, how can I have any strength or capacity? I am so weak and insignificant. If you think of God as someone who is more than eager to give you what he has, then you will feel the strength that God has is all for me. When the time comes, he will offer it to me. When you have established that kind of feeling, when you feel that your father is going to give you everything that you need, then automatically you will have abiding faith. In the morning, I feed my faith flames. In the evening, I see something quite astonishing. All my doubts have died of starvation. The Eye of Faith Faith is the eye that is shared by both God and man. This eye of faith sees the future inside the immediacy of the present. If we have faith in the spiritual life, we do not stumble, we do not walk, we do not march. No, we simply run. If we have implicit faith in God, in the inner pilot, and in our own aspiration, then we constantly run the fastest toward our destined goal. Jesus Christ said, Blessed are those who have believed and have not seen. People who believe only what they see with their naked eyes are eating only half the fruit. To scrutinize the truth is to lose it. Truth is a matter of identification. This is the Christ's lofty pronouncement about faith and doubt. Blessed are those who have faith without demanding proof at every moment. What you call faith, I call the soul's foreknowledge of the highest truth. Faith tells us not only what God is, but also what God can do for us at every moment. This faith is our living breath in God the Omniscient and God the Omnipotent. See through the eye of faith, you will see the eternal truth. Feel through the heart of faith, you will feel the immortal truth. What is sleepless faith? It is a beacon light for those who are sailing in the golden boat toward the golden shore.